Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Stake webinar this afternoon. Uh, my name is Ricardo. I'm co-founder and CTO for Stake. And uh, we are here to talk uh, about our new feature that we launched this week called uh, Exit Windows. <clears throat> so just to go through over the agenda, uh, we I'm going to introduce my, my colleagues, panelists here as well. Uh, we're going to go through what is the exit window and why have we created and why now. And um, my team here is going to do a product demo, uh, one uh, uh, between one for sellers and one for buyers. So we're going to go through both journeys for sellers and buyers. And at the end, we're going to have Q&A and um, a, a Q&A session where we can, uh, of course, clarify any questions that you might have about, about uh, this, this release and this, this iteration in our product. Uh, so I already, already introduced myself. My name is Ricardo. Uh, I have with me Finn Efron, which is head of product at Stake, and also Saran Sound, which is a product manager at Stake. And um, we, we are the team that built the, the, this iteration on the product. And so we are more than happy to host you this afternoon and answer any questions that you might have. Uh, let's start. Why why have we created the exit window, uh, and and why now? Uh, first of all, uh, as you know, uh, we provide fractional investment investment in real estate, and real estate is a, is indeed a long term investment, and we see it as such. However, um, uh, as part of this asset class, which is real estate, it is very important that we can offer uh, flexibility and liquidity, where investors can perhaps. Uh, if they need if they need the liquidity, they can exit their positions and their stakes early in their journey. Uh, there there will be different motivations for investors to exit. Maybe they would they would need the funds, or maybe they already realize some return. Uh, and and uh, in what we are allowing is a fully digital experience where they can do that via our app. Uh, this is a, also a critical milestone for us uh, because we believe in, that for the asset class to be completed, it needs to have this very uh, closing loop, which is not only can enter, but you have points in time where you can exit and realize some of your returns or all of your returns. <clears throat> uh, if we go through what, how does this work for the sellers, um, it's very simple. Uh, sellers, uh, first of all, need to at least hold their stakes for at least one year from the from the moment they invest uh, in the, a primary listing. Um, after having hold the stake for one year, there are that stake, that number of shares, it's eligible to be sold on an exit window. Um, uh, there is no minimum shares that can be listed to be to be sold, and uh, we at the moment we're gonna be running two biannual exit windows uh this year but as you can imagine our ambition is to provide that facility more often and we're gonna we are going to uh, spot opportunities to do that in the future uh, our first iteration on this product uh, allows the sellers to uh, list their assets at the latest valuation which is a valuation that is what you can call current valuation given it was done within the last month of listing but they can also uh, sell their stakes at, the, at a discount. We have uh, four steps of discount. We have 5%, 10%, 15%, and 20%. And uh, this is a way for them to perhaps uh, uh, create attractiveness on their, on their listing. Uh, for a buyer, uh, buyers will be more interested in, in buying at the lowest price possible. And for a seller, of course, they'll be interested in, uh, in realizing as much returns as possible. And when those two conditions intercept, we can realize a sale. Tin and Saran will show you how this works in the product. <clears throat> in terms of buyers, uh, buyers need to be existing investors at stake. So they, they, they must have held at least one stake uh, in their portfolio. Uh, if you have realized the full uh, sold of that of that stake, you still qualify to access the market, as long as you have held a stake in the past. 
there is no minimum uh, amount that can be purchased. So you can buy from one share to uh, the supply of shares that are available for each property. And in our first window, we uh, the the investors and buyers can access a, a, a range of 28 properties. And this corresponds to 28 properties that, of course, have shares issued that are older than the one-year lock-in. Uh, for buyers, uh, 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 the exit window offers a possibility to uh, increase their earning potential, not only because they can access a good variety of investment opportunities, different uh, different properties in different geographical regions uh, in UAE today, late, uh, uh, but also uh, they can invest in properties that are marked below market price, given sellers can also list properties at a discount. So there will be opportunities uh, and hopefully good opportunities for sellers to realize a good, good returns. I would like to share with you <clears throat> firsthand how is it going so far. We launched at midnight uh, in Gulf time uh, on the 2nd of May. So far we had over 1 million uh, AD transacting, dirhams transacted. Um, we observed more than 800 transactions. And uh, all the 28 properties that we have available have at least been listed and sold at least uh, some shares. Uh, our sell liquidity ratio, it's a very healthy 50%. Uh, it has been fluctuating in the last few days between 50 and 51%. Um, and we, we're going to monitor that and ensure that there is enough liquidity from the seller point of view. Just to clarify one thing, when I mean seller liquidity, means the, the number of uh, sellers that have at least sold one share divided by the number of sellers that are trying to sell shares. Uh, if you have any questions about any, any of, the, of the things I mentioned, please reach out at the end. Um, <clears throat> without further ado, uh, we're going to go into the product demo now. I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Finn Efron, and he's going to go through the seller journey with you. And uh, yeah, I'll go I'll get back at the end of the webinar. So. Hello, guys. Thank you for joining us. Um, we're just going to set up the app now, so we'll share a test environment with you, and we'll basically be able to walk you through the, the buyer and the seller journey. Um, so I'll kick off by taking a real property, a real um, asset that we manage for on behalf of our investors, and we'll walk you through the seller journey for a test user who wants to exit this property. Um, just loading it up now. Just give us a minute. Sorry, guys, just loading here. Should not be in another two or three minutes. There we go. Perfect. So what you're seeing here is a um, live simulator of a test environment um, for stake. So if we go into the portfolio tab, many of you are very familiar with here. This is how you manage their investments. Oh, sorry, wrong account. Just give us a minute. Uh, 
Okay, um, so if we scroll down and if you go to the bottom of your portfolios, this is the access point that we've created for the exit window feature. Um, so this will be evergreen on the portfolio screen when the exit window is closed, um, you'll be able to see when the next one is opening. Um, and basically, as Ricardo explained, we'll be doing two week exit windows twice a year, once in May and once in November. And every time it'll be the first Tuesday of the month. So that's what we call our trading Tuesdays. And that's where we'll be giving you guys access to uh, liquidity on a biannual basis. Um, if you, when you click into sell with stakes, we have an educational screen where you can learn more about how the feature works. Again, the goal of this is for us to give you control of your investment and take control of the exit process by listing your shares for sale at the current valuation, which again is a third party valuation that we do just before we open each exit window or at up to 20% below market value. And this is again, to give you a vehicle to be able to exit, um, or to maybe increase your chances of exit if you uh, really need liquidity, but this is not a trading tool. So we say it's liquidity when you need it. We still believe that the best way to gain returns is to hold real estate for the long term uh, and to be able to kind of consistently bring in that monthly rental income into your portfolio and into your pocket. Um, but in case you need emergency liquidity, this is an innovation we've brought to the asset class. And this is not something you can do with traditional real estate, but something that you will be able to do through stake. Um, so if you want to list your properties, you just click on the list your properties CTA, you'll see a list of all your properties that are eligible for sale. Uh, and in this case, the any properties that the user has owned or this investor has owned for more than a year will be eligible for them to sell all or part of their shares on, on the exit window. So let's take, for example, Al Majara, which is one of the properties that we manage for our investors. Um, you'll be able to see how many shares you have available in Al Majara or whatever property that you choose. Um, and by creating a cell, by clicking the create a cell listing CTA, um, you'll be able to sell a certain number of shares in the property. So if we were to sell 5,000 shares in Al Majara, you'll get all the information on what you would receive. Uh, you get information on how much you actually invested in order to receive that uh, those 5,000 shares, you'll see the current share price that you're available to sell at, the date that you invested. And you'll also see under your returns, we kind of highlight what rent you've received on this property, how much cashbacks and promotions that you receive from stake when acquiring this property and what you would receive from the sale. So in this case, in this case of this investor in Almajara, the user has received a 22.55 return on investment. So again, that includes the promotions, but also the rent and the appreciation. Uh, from this property. Now, if they did want to, if the seller did want to add a discount, let's say five or 10%, uh, then you would obviously the sale value would decrease. You would still have obviously received the same amount of rent, uh, but your sale value and your returns would decrease. It would still be a very good return, but you would be able to exit faster. Uh, when we go down, you can see the sale amount and then you can see the exit fees. And the exit fees is the same 2.5% that applies whenever someone exits stake. So exactly what you see in the investor agreement when you invest, uh, we do charge 2.5% at exit. So that would be charged whether you invest in the primary market where we sell the whole property, or if you invest peer to peer through the exit window, uh, we do charge 2.5%, but there is no additional fees for using the exit window. This is a feature that we've built in to improve the experience, to kind of realize our vision of bringing liquidity to the real estate asset class. But we do still charge the 2.5% that you would pay uh, when exiting on the primary market anyway. So if we confirm the listing for this Almajara unit, um, you just have to agree to the terms and conditions and transfer agreement. And then your listing is live. You've created a sell listing, and this will go on to uh, the buyer side of our exit window feature. 
and the user will be able to track how many shares are sold, how many are remaining. Everything is on a first come first serve basis. So again, uh, would ask that you do set the remind me feature when you're using the exit window or before the exit window opens so that you can make sure to list your property as soon as possible. All sales will be on a first come first serve basis in terms of who created their listing first. Um, and then you'll be able to go back into the sell side of the exit window in order to kind of track how many shares have been sold, how many are remaining, and what's your pending payout on each property. Perfect, so that is how the sell side works. We'll be obviously taking questions uh, after the presentation, but in the meantime, I'm gonna pass over to my colleague Saran, who's been the product lead and Mr. Exit Window, and he's gonna take you guys through the buyer side of uh, this feature. Cool. Uh, thanks, Finn and Ricardo. So, uh, hey guys, uh, I'm Saran. Um, you know, as mentioned, I'm the product manager for the Core Experience Squad, and you know, we've been working on this uh, exit feature, exit window feature, for quite some time, and we're really excited to make this available to you guys. So, without further ado, let me uh, walk you through the buying journey of our exit window feature. So, again, just to highlight, with this features, um, the buyers have a uh, potential to invest in almost 20 plus properties that we've previously funded on our platform and that have super high potential. And there's also a opportunity to earn, earn higher, higher earnings um, by investing in the property below market value. And that's hard to do with the discount functionality that our exit window offers. So when you first land onto our app, of course, you're um, redirected to the homepage, which shows our primary listings. And uh, on the top here, we have a exit window uh, banner. This banner is only shown uh, for users who are eligible for the exit window. So at this time, um, we are required uh, to uh, require our users to own at least one stake to be eligible for secondary listings. So if we click the view secondary listing CTA, Uh, great. So yeah, when you click the view secondary listing CTA, we're taking to a info screen. Again, here we highlight the buying side value propositions, um, you know, which is you can invest at a discounted price and potentially buy a piece of property below market value, which is a huge plus on the buying side. And this is what ultimately, um, you know, gives you the higher earning potential. So let's click view secondary listings and proceed to see what's available on the exit window. Cool, so this page is where we can view all the secondary listings. So it's really like a candy store, but for properties. Uh, so if we scroll down here, we can see there's different properties that are available on this exit window feature. Uh, you know, you can see the property name and image, and we show the property price along with the percentage that is available for purchase. Uh, you know, you can you can still buy. Uh, there's no limit on the amount you can buy. You can buy one share or the maximum available. So let's go ahead and select one property that interests us, which will be the two bed in the bridges. <clears throat> awesome. So clicking the property takes you to a more detailed page, and this is what we call the property detail page. Uh, here at first, of course, you're greeted with beautiful images of the property, the location. You have the current valuation of the property along with the number of investors. So you kind of have uh, you kind of have visibility into that. We also have the ranges of annualized returns and projected net yields based on the shares that are available for this particular property for, uh, for purchase. Scrolling down, we also have some key highlights about the property, including location and the current rental status. Uh, and we can kind of see that this property has a current rent of approximately 6,000 dirhams per month. Uh, further scrolling down, this is where uh, the you know the key um, key things you would want to look at as a buyer are for in in terms of secondary listings. So here you can see the available share prices that you can buy uh, this property at. So each share price, uh, along with the discount, will let you know uh, you know that if if you're buying with no discount, there's a X list price. So in this case, that's nine hundred and ninety six thousand dirhams. Uh, but with the 5% discount that you're actually purchasing the property at a value of 946,000 dirhams. And this is what ultimately leads 
to a higher ROI and higher net yield and really benefits you as a buyer. So as a buyer, you would of course wanna buy the maximum percentage of discount available. Uh, and then, you know, that will give you the, the best possible returns. And you can kind of compare the two options or multiple options uh, by expanding these containers. Um, <clears throat> let's select a share price here. Um, so if we click the share price, we can see the two available prices and we'll go with the maximum discount. And click buy shares. Okay, so on this screen, we actually enter the amount of shares that we'd like to purchase. So of course, again, uh, we would, as a buyer, want to go for the maximum discount available. In this case, it's 5%. Uh, we already have the share price selected here, so we can go with uh, 1,000 shares. And you can see the annualized ROI net yield that you would get with this purchase, along with uh, what's going to cost you in uh, term amount. So if this is interesting us, we can click review order. And again, we have to agree to the terms and conditions and the transfer agreement as required by our regulation. Uh, and then, and as a final step, this is our payment screen and review screen. We can just make sure everything looks good. Uh, so again, we're investing in a two bed in the bridges. Uh, it's gonna cost us 966 dirhams approximately. 1,000 uh, shares at a share price of 0 0.97, which is at a 5% discount. And we can quickly go ahead and place the order. And just like that, you've invested in a property on the secondary listing. So at this time, your investment is confirmed and you will also receive an email uh, confirmation uh, that will, you know, uh, be for your records and have all this information available. We also have a timeline here that uh, informs you as a buyer what the next steps are. So the exit window closing date is the next first step. After that, we will have the share transfer take place between the seller and the buyer. And that's approximately going to happen on or by June 15th, 2023. And then you can expect your first rental payment at the end of June. So uh, it's really beneficial for you as a buyer to you know, receive rent as soon as next month, uh, which is super powerful. And so this investment will also show in your portfolio. So we can quickly look at how that looks on your portfolio. So if you were to land on your portfolio, you scroll down to where you would usually see your stakes. We have the pending tab. And as you see here, we have the two bed and bridges that we just invested in. Uh, so this page will give you details of your investment. So of course, this is a secondary listing investment. Uh, it shows you your investment amount. And then the number of shares you, uh, the, you, you purchased and then the subsequent ownership percentage associated with that shares. And then you have your timeline to refer to. So you can always come back here and keep track of how your investment is progressing. Um, and this will this page will ultimately evolve once the share transfer takes place to you know keep track of your rental payments etc. Uh, so yeah, just to recap again, the exit window feature you have uh, you know as a buyer uh, the chance of investing in high performance properties that were previously funded on our platform or you know properties that are in your eye um, like just you know something that interests you and then also potentially earn a higher return on investment uh, due to the discount fun uh, discount functionality and potentially capitalize on that. So it's, it's kind of a win-win situation. And it kind of wraps up the, the buying side demo. I, uh, you know, I hope you find this helpful. And if you have any questions, we can you know, ask in the Q&A and we'll do our best to answer them. Uh, great. Pass it over great. Yeah. Uh, great, Saran. Thank you so much. Thank you, Finn. Thanks for the, doing the demo. Uh, great, great. So I'm back here uh, we are getting to the second part of the webinar which is the q a part we already had some questions here that uh, some of you submitted um and uh, yeah i would like to go through those uh, try to address as much as i can and i'm going to hand over to finn and start to also um, answer some some questions um i guess uh, i can pick up here one that is very pertinent uh, <clears throat> uh so uh how can i uh so can i set my own selling price for shares and why why are you not uh, allowing uh, to sell at the premium I, I guess that's the question so we 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 thought hard about this and we we made a decision 
So first of all, I think we are giving uh, uh, a, a transparency around what is the, the current valuation at the market price for the property. And that's why we have revalued all the 28 properties ahead of the market uh, uh, with third party valuations. And you can access those reports in the property details uh, screen. Uh, but also, um, we believe that um, uh, that in order to accelerate liquidity and to offer possibly still good exit routes for sellers, uh, there is a possibility for sellers to sell at a discount. And this is why we offer this, this, um, this option. We don't see at the moment as um, incentivizing or promoting people selling at a premium, given we just did a recent uh, valuation report and we believe that is the fair market value of the asset. Um, yeah, but uh, I think I think we also are here to hear feedback. We also decided to um, not allow you to set uh, exactly the discount. We we are suggesting five percent step discounts. And from our first observation on the first few days, this has been working fine. Um, I guess it gives 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 still the flexibility for sellers to 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 make a decision in that regard. And as Finn demonstrated, gives uh, the visibility necessary to to understand the ROI that you are getting by selling earlier uh, than your investment term. Uh, so uh, uh, that's that's the first question. Uh, the second question uh, I have here as as well, which uh, someone asked, how long does it take to get my uh, share certificate in title deeds? Uh, I, I guess this is for a buyer. Um, uh, so uh, the market, uh, the window, the window uh, finishes on the 15th of May. Um, after everything uh, if is finished, we have um, we have a period of about one month where we're gonna be uh, executing uh, the share transfers at the SPV level uh, for each property, which may, might mean um, including new uh, shareholders into the, that SPV and also might mean uh, removing or decreasing some uh, shareholders on the cap table of that SPV. Uh, after all that paperwork, we, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna uh, of course, um, uh, execute the the when everything is ready. We're gonna execute the share transfers. So the share transfers happen in two ways. For sellers, the sellers will see on their uh, digital wallet on the mobile app, uh, they'll see their returns uh, credited into that their wallet. They can of course decide to either reinvest those returns into new properties or withdraw those those returns, those funds. Uh, that uh, that amount is the net proceeds from the exit, from that exit. So it will not, of course, uh, it will be de deducted exit fees. Any any fees that are uh, due will be deducted. For the buyer, the buyer already have paid for for the investment. So the the buyer will uh, will just receive the new shares on their portfolio. Their portfolio at that point will increase in value, corresponding to the current valuation of those shares. So according to the current valuation, not at the value uh, that value that they bought. For example, if they bought at a discount, they will see the value reflected as if it was the real value in the market. <clears throat> uh, Besides that, so we, we do expect this to take about one month. Besides that, I just want to inform you that we will be sending uh, automatic emails. Our platform will is prepared to send automatic emails to inform you not only when the market will, it will be closing, but also um, when you when the share transfer takes place, you'll receive an email and a push notification informing you that you you either have your funds available to to to, uh, to on your wallet or you're gonna have your shares available in your portfolio i hope this clarifies the question um i i have i can see another question coming in here uh this one is uh, can you explain please how the share price is determined i think for this one i'm going to hand over to finn here so i'll mute myself quickly yes thanks ricardo um the share price, as uh, I kind of uh, we covered in the seller side of the journey, is 
basically made up of the current, it's a combination of the current market valuation of the property. So that would have appreciated since acquisition in all of our properties, um, as well as it's also determined by the number of shares outstanding. And on the buyer side, also the discount comes into it. So if you're, uh, if you're selling at a larger discount, your share, selling share price will be lower. Um, and on the buy side, if you're buying at a discount, also you'll be purchasing in at a lower valuation. Um, so the uh, share price is made up of basically the, the total outstanding shares plus the current valuation that is impacted uh, at a user level by what kind of discount that they enter when selling the and selling those shares. All right, thanks, okay. Finn. Thank you. Uh, great. Uh, okay, we have here one more question. Um, I think this one Sam can take. Do shares bought by uh, secondary listings will also have one year locked in period? I guess that's a question. I think Soren, can you clarify that for us, please? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, so for secondary investments, we uh, won't have a one year lock in period. The one year lock in period only applies for properties from the time of initial funding. So uh, if you were to purchase a property in this exit window that's uh, currently ongoing, uh, you could sell it uh, through our exit window that will open in November. Um, so you you know that that is an added flexibility as a buyer uh, if you were to purchase a property as a secondary listing, you'd have the option to sell uh, as soon as within you know six months when the the next window opens. Uh, and you know part of this is to give you flexibility as a buyer, but also uh, you know give you the flexibility to you know exit when you when you need to. And yeah, I think this is uh, really valuable. Okay, hey, great, Soren. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. So, thank you so much. Uh, uh, attendees, please. Uh, I see that the, there was an issue with our chat. Can if you guys have questions, please uh, put it on the chat. If you can see the chat, and uh, I'm able to answer. Okay, great. Um, I think one question just came up. Uh, so about uh, amortiz amortizable fees uh, and also transfer fees. So um, I can I can maybe cover transfer fees and you can cover amortizable fees. Fin. Um, I so transfer fees uh, that that show up uh, regarding to what uh, what fees the uh, organisms like the FC charge us to execute the transfer. So we do this is fees that are incurred by the buyer. Uh, and what we are trying to provide you is a transparent way where you can evaluate. Uh, given the the price you're going to pay has all in cost so you you need to treat it as such um and um and and yeah it's a fees that are not incurred for a stake but it's incurred by the process of transfer transferring the shares uh, and Finn here will explain the amortizable fees yeah the amortizable fees is a very interesting concept this is something that we believe uh is an area where we're bringing real innovation to the asset class as well um, so as everyone knows, when you enter into a real estate investment, you do incur a certain transaction costs. Um, those are um, those are bought into when you acquire your property on stake, and usually those would be some costs. But in the case of the stake business model, because we are holding the uh, we're managing the asset over a certain life cycle, so in this case, usually five years, uh, we're able to pass on some of the fees that were acquired at the uh, or kind of taken on an acquisition, and because we're not reselling because we're actually just transferring the shares in the SPV, we can pass on a certain percentage of the costs to uh, to the new buyer. Um, so let's say, for example, you had held your property for two years, so it's two out of the five year life cycle, and we had done certain renovations, which were charged at the time of acquisition in order to increase the net yield, you'll be able to pass on 60% of those uh, costs to the new buyer. And uh, that's because you basically haven't uh, realized the full value of, of that fee. And uh, we think that it's fair that you could be able to pass that on. Um, I can take another one or two from here as well. I think that the commission rate of 2.5%. So this is the kind of, this is the exit fee. This is uh, what we have in our investor memo. This is what we have on our website. This is the normal exit fee charge that we charge when we exit full properties as well. 
So last year we exited a full property where we resold it and we paid the investors back their returns. Of course, that's 2.5% was charged and that's how we make money. This is part of, this is our business model and this is the same as if you were to exit on the primary market. But of course, if you're exiting on the uh, secondary market through the exit windows, uh, that fee is still incurable. Um, and then can you first list at zero discount and if no interest change it to 5%? Yes, of course. So you can put a listing at 0%. And then if you don't see any movement in that property or in that listing, you can then cancel and you can relist it at a 5% discount. Yeah, thank, thanks, Finn. Uh, <clears throat> I think I can cover exactly. a few more. And so I'm, I'm going to hand over some to you as well. Um, uh, I guess uh, there's a question here that is, is recurring that is what are performance fees? And uh, let me please clarify that. Performance fees are incurred only if you have a profit of all the after all the fees, um, and they are only charged on the profit you make. So they are not charged on the wholesale, and typically results in a very low uh, amount uh, in absolute terms. Um, uh, I can tell you that most properties, most transactions that are happening on the market. Um, uh, don't have the, that fee is, is relatively small, but the way the way you uh, the way you can preview that is going by the seller journey. Try to submit your shares. You're gonna you're gonna understand what's your ROI. You're gonna understand what's your exit fee in absolute terms, which you, you already know that is two and a half percent, and you're gonna understand what's your incentive fees. But again, that fee is not charged on the whole amount. It's charged only on the profit you're gonna make. Um, uh, at the end um, um, just maybe take one more and then hand over one to uh, Saran um, uh, why the one year lock-in period uh, so the when we we believe again going back to the, the beginning we believe that real estate is is not uh, is not uh, is a different asset class compared to for example stocks crypto and by its nature it's much more stable um, and uh, when we when we think about a short term uh, holding period, you typically don't see a lot of uh, appreciation. Uh, and we also we don't want to the way the way the reason why we call this feature and this functionality exit window is because we see it as an option for you to liquidate. We don't see it as a trading facility and we we will never use that term. Uh, and therefore, we believe that this is a reasonable period where we can offer an early exit. Uh, but as you can imagine, the longer you're going to hold the asset, the more dividends you're going to be realizing, and hopefully, the more appreciation that property will realize over time. So we do see it as um, we actually recommend <laughs> to you to hold the asset for as long as you can, if you if you don't need that liquidity now. Um, we see it as a if in between quotes an emergency lever if you need to exit and have that liquidity. So the one year is a is a period that we think it's reasonable for you to consider exit, but we don't we still recommend you to hold that for longer. Um, <clears throat> uh, 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 there's a question here that I think Saran will be very good at responding. Do sellers have the ability to edit their listings during the exit window to higher discounts? Can you clarify that? Uh, yes. So, uh, good question. Uh, so, right now, there is no ability to edit a listing. However, you can cancel your current listing and then create uh, a new listing at you know a, a new discount percentage or a new selling price as you will. Um, however, there's one thing important to note: um, we the way the transaction uh, system works is it's on a first come first serve basis. So, for example, if you made a listing, uh, you know today. At a particular share price, you're you're potentially higher up in the queue than if you were to cancel and relist at a later date. Uh, you'll kind of be put back of the queue. So that is something to consider when you make this decision of uh, relisting. If you relist at a different price, then you know each share price has its own queue, uh, and that's kind of how the system works. Uh, but yeah, it, technically you have the ability to cancel and relist um, your, your shares for sale. Uh, there's another question that I'd like to take, uh, and this is about um, you know, payments as a current share owner and then payments for the new owner. So uh, the question, so 
if if you have listed shares for sale in this May exit window, you will still receive the payments that you are due uh, as long as you're the owner of the, the shares. So what that means is any previous months that you have still not received the payment for, when and uh, you know when and if you are uh, due that amount, you will receive that within your stake wallet. You will also receive the payment for the month of May uh, because the share transfer will take place in the mid of June. So once the share transfer takes place in June, uh, both the buyer and the seller will be notified via email. Uh, so you will have that communication uh, done with you. And at that time, uh, once the share transfer takes place, the new owner completely owns the share and the seller is completely out of the out of the ownership of their shares. So the June payment will then uh, be given to the new share owner, which will be, uh, you know, the buyer. And um, that will also be, you know, how we do primary listings, the, the same process applies. You will receive your rent uh, in your wallet and you also receive subsequent communication on when your rent payments are done, which is usually on uh, the last Thursday of each month. Uh, there's uh, there's another... Other... Oh, sorry. I was going to yeah. say, do you want me to do some? I just... Yeah, uh, sure. yeah going up to the top, just uh, to the ones we might have missed, there's Gara, Fike, and Cliff. Um, what fees are associated with buying? So we don't add any, definitely the, the stake fees of 1%. No, this is a acquisition fee that is charged when acquiring the property. So in this case, we're not acquiring a property. So we don't charge any additional fees on the buying side. Um, there's, oh, the only one is the rear one you mentioned. So the DLD fee is still chargeable. That's a regulation here in Dubai. So that goes to the Dubai land department. But apart from that, uh, so it's still considered a transfer of property, but apart from that, we're not acquiring a property here. We're transferring it between our investors. So there's no stake fees, no additional fees beyond the, the rear registration. Uh, can you organize a webinar for the UAE Golden Visa? I think that's a great, great idea. That's a new feature that we launched recently as well. So anyone on our platform who invests more than 2 million dirhams from abroad automatically gets a Golden Visa, or we will facilitate their application for a Golden Visa for the UAE. Um, that would be a great one to do as well. So yes, let us uh, look, look into that and get back to you guys. Uh, Cliff, the regulations regarding the movement of money. Yes, you uh, your bank account can fund the wallet or you can also fund with a debit card. Uh, if you're a professional investor, you can fund with a credit card. But if you're a retail investor, you can fund your account with a uh, Visa or MasterCard debit card uh, with no fees. And that will go into your stake wallet to purchase the property, or you can use it at checkout to just purchase your property directly. Um, and then, yes, the rent will be paid into your wallet monthly, and you can withdraw that into any account in the world. So you can have your bank account stored on your stake wallet. Um, you can either in reinvest the, uh, the rental income, or you can withdraw that uh, to your bank account. Covered performance fees. Uh, in case of purchase, who owns the property, Arafat? That's so we will transfer the ownership. So again, the exit window will close on the 15th. Uh, the sellers will still receive their uh, rental income in the month of the uh, exit window because we haven't transferred ownership of the property. But at the around the beginning of June, we will uh, do the ops work. So again, a lot of the value proposition around stake is we do the heavy listing, we make this hassle free, it's all digital for you. So it's seamless for you guys, but not for us. So we'll be doing the kind of uh, ops work around transferring ownership of all the properties. So anyone who sold, we will transfer the property from their name into the new owners. And then from June onwards, buyers will receive uh, the rental income and they will also receive title deeds and share certificates to prove that they are the legal owners of the properties that they bought in the, in the secondary market. Uh, so we're as far as Arafat's question, um, Ricardo, do you want to pick up a few? Yeah, thanks, Finn. Uh, yeah, just I'm not sure where we left off, but let, let me just try to pick up some that I know. Um, would that be any fractional shares? Uh, the answer is at the moment, no, and we don't see a reason for it because when we issue the SPV, we capitalize the SPV with with uh, corresponding of one share corresponding to one dirham of funding amount. So in, in case of, if you were to have a fraction of a share, it would be a very, very small amount. So for simplicity, we, we sell whole shares, which then results in, in, in a calculated value that you need to pay. Um, so there's no, 
there's no reason for it at the moment. Um, uh, do you have a register separately for the exit? Yes. So uh, uh, once the exit window closes uh, at the bottom of your portfolio, you can see the previous windows. At imagine on the 16th of May, uh, anyone that has uh, submitted anything to be sold can see um, out of those listings how many shares were sold, what is the total pending payout, um, and uh, where do they stand on that. That information will always be there, but don't for, uh, don't forget you remain to be held holding those shares, and you will you will be like Sren mentioned, you'll be due dividends in May still. Um, and uh, then only in June, uh, the shares will disappear, transacted out of your portfolio. And, but you can still visualize what happened in the window that, that historical does not, uh, let's say, uh, disappear. You can always access that and uh, see what, what, what happened. Uh, <clears throat> um, the... Just one more, maybe I take and then I'll circulate. Uh, are fu fully funded uh, properties now available as secondary listings? Uh, not all, not all. So we, I think we funded uh, north of 70 to 80 properties. Um, we only are offering 28. Those 28 are the ones that are our first properties as, as a company. Um, and all those 28 have uh, been funded more than one year ago. And as you can imagine, as we go into the November window, uh, in November, there will be much more properties uh, uh, available. Um, and uh, yeah, we, in, the, in the mission of, uh, again, offering a, a high variety of properties that can be, can be sold, sell, sold and bought uh, uh, by, by you guys. <clears throat> uh, I'll just take uh, perhaps some more one question here that mentions about the net yield and loss return being lower than initially than the original deal. Um, uh, the, the, indeed, some, some of the properties um, uh, have a lower yields than initially projected, but some also have higher yields. So uh, it, this is why it's so important and this is why we exist. Uh, you, uh, what, as an investor, we need to think about diversification. So that means distributing your investment amounts via different properties, ge uh, geographically distributing, ge uh, diversifying, not geographically. So we offer an array of opportunities today. We offer uh, not only long-term rentals, we offer holiday homes, uh, and we offer also different uh, neighborhoods, uh, areas in Dubai. Um, and we now offer also uh, secondary listings, which your entry point on that asset might be uh, lower than the current valuation. So um, what I can say uh, in terms of that is, uh, it is all about diversification. In the same way, we do have properties that are uh, exceeding and we have some properties that are a bit lower, uh, but you, as an investor, you need to take that informed decision and our mission here is to provide as much transparency as we can on the asset class. <clears throat> uh, maybe Sran, can you take a few more, please? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, okay, so there's a question about the payment methods that can be used and which ones do not incur fees. Um, so similar to our primary uh, listings, uh, we accept Visa and MasterCard uh, debit cards. Uh, and uh, we also have the option to pay with Apple Pay using, uh, using debit cards. For professional investors, um, they are able to also use credit cards to invest. For secondary listings, however, we do not have bank accounts uh, or you, you, can, you cannot invest using a bank transfer. And the reason to that, uh, the reason uh, for that is bank transfer takes time. And since this is, uh, you know, we're doing trade uh, matching uh, between buyers and sellers. So, um, you know, the higher processing time is uh, not appropriate for uh, this investment. So, uh, there is no fees on using your debit cards. Um, and so it's it's really easy and fast to use those payment methods. Uh, there's also a question just for some further clarification on my previous comment about queuing. So uh, what I meant by queuing is in the context of when you create a sell listing. So uh, when you create a sell listing for a property, there's a, a list that is populated based on, uh, you know, on a first come first serve basis. 
So if you were to list uh, shares at a share price that no previous seller was selling at, you would be the first seller in the queue for the shares to be sold. However, at a time where you maybe cancel your listing and relist, you're now going to be on the back of the queue if there are any other persons that you know are selling the share as well. So uh, in terms of uh, context, that's only really for when we're when you create a sell listing. Uh, the properties are, again, again, I think Ricardo covered this before, the properties that are currently eligible are properties uh, that have been uh, funded, uh, you know, and funded uh, one year uh, prior. And uh, that's around 28 or so properties at this time. In the next window, more properties will be eligible, of course, naturally, given uh, that's the criteria at this time. Let's see if there's... If I can, if I can I do something. <clears throat> I can just censor one here that is very easy, actually, because we've been working recently on it. Um, uh, why my portfolio is not showing the shares value in the secondary market? It, it is uh, something that uh, we have two tabs at the moment on the portfolio. We have the owned shares and we have the uh, pending investments. Uh, at the moment, uh, we, are, we are showing the number of shares and the value, the amount. But that value will be surfaced. It, it was more something that we identified that can be improved. Don't forget that around the 15th of June, uh, or like around that date, we we will we will see when we want to make it as fast as we can. Probably uh, there's a possibility that it could be sooner, but with no guarantees. Um, though those shares will transfer to owned, and at that point we can assess according to the portfolio, our portfolio engine. We can assess what's the value of the property of of the shares. But um, uh, uh, we, if you want, you can calculate those values at at today manually. I know it's not ideal, uh, but we will make that visible in the portfolio. That's a piece of feedback that we already had bef uh, from our users, and we're gonna we are reacting to it. We are we are working on it. Saran, Finn, and I are working on it, and we will make that available very soon. Uh, Finn, why don't you answer a few? Yeah, uh, there's a few here I wanted to pick up. Uh, one is a feature idea, and it's a good one to be able to sort the secondary market properties by discount rate, uh, making it easier to identify opportunities with discount rather than scrolling through the 20 plus properties listed. We were working on this, and that was actually part of our plan for, for the release. But in the end, we, we had a date to hit and we had to pull certain functionality from, from the release product to make sure that we could launch. But very, very soon, um, we basically for the next window, it's a no brainer. We will definitely have more filter and sorting functionality. So it's kind of easier to engage with the, uh, with the secondary market, but please do share all of the feedback on usability with our team. Uh, we spend a lot of time going through this and Saran and his team will be delighted to take on that feedback. And there's a lot of improvements. We're gonna have a lot more time to be able to uh, improve the usability for V2. Uh, Thomas asked, how is it determined when a stake owned property should be listed for sale and exited from the portfolio? Uh, it's up to uh, the user. So basically if you want to, it's up to the investor Again, we all recommend holding long term. Real estate is about making money over the long term. Uh, unless you absolutely need to liquidate and you need the money, uh, we would recommend that you keep it in your portfolio. Uh, appreciation compounds over time. You're getting that monthly rental income. Uh, but if you do need to, you can use it, as Ricardo said, as a, in quotes, emergency lever to be able to liquidate and, uh, and exit the property. Uh, there's other ways to exit on stake. So again, after five years, uh, we do intend to kind of, depending on market conditions and owner sentiment and voting, uh, be able to kind of do full sales of the properties. And then you'd be able to reinvest that amount in other opportunities on the platform. Uh, the legal structure to deal with the transfer of property of stake investors in the web page, I don't think it's in detail on the uh, on our website, but if you reach out to our client relations team, you can ask us them through the intercom chat on the profile section of our app, um, or you can reach out to us via email. We have lots of information on the, the legal structure of how we transfer the properties and how to transfer the ownership in the SPVs. In future, would you consider property investments in overseas markets like the UK? Yes, we've been working very hard on other markets. Um, there's a few things that we get kind of repeat feedback on and definitely align with the vision of the product and the business that we're trying to create. We want to offer more variability and diversity on the platform. So commercial properties as well as overseas properties is something that we're working very, very hard on this year. 
Um, we are launching um, our business in Egypt this year. So we will have uh, opportunities there for Egyptian nationals. We're waiting on our application and approval to operate in Saudi. And in Saudi, we would be able to offer real estate funds to international investors. Um, we also have um, started looking at the structure in the UK and other European countries, but we're much more advanced on the US. And this is something we're currently working with multiple regulators on how is the best way and the safest way for our investors for us to implement this in the property on the on the platform. But we do intend to be able to offer a product that has multiple international markets, as well as different types of real estate assets that you can invest into. And I have an interesting one here. Interesting. Uh, that is, um, can an existing on and off shares buy more shares in an exit window? And the answer is yes. Yes. So, uh, if you, for example, you might have bought at a certain price and after one, two years, you can see that uh, property uh, uh, value over time. You can see the potential of the property. You can spot for, of course, you can buy at current valuation or you can perhaps, um, if you're a savvy investor, uh, uh, wait for an opportunity to buy at a discount and that would of course increase your returns on that asset uh, that is we see uh, our investors doing that already on the first few days of activity and um, uh, we don't, I cannot give investors advice but yeah that's that's a way to that's a way to um, I guess increase the potential of your returns that is a way um, just, just a s s short clarification. Uh, just maybe a last clarification on cards and fees. Um, retail investors can only use debit cards. Uh, if you want to be qualified as a professional investor, you can. Please reach out to us. There is a, a few conditions about your uh, 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 total wealth that needs to be uh, determined. Um, but uh, after being classified as a professional, you can use a credit card. Today, we don't charge any fees on our uh, payment processing. Um, and we, of course, uh, we don't charge any fees if you want to trans uh, transfer via bank transfer. Those That's the same applies for Apple Pay, which we have available on our iPhone app. Um, and hopefully Google, Google Pay will be rolled out uh, soon, anytime this year. Um, yeah, two FA. FA is a question. Two FA, okay. Two uh, FA is something that uh, Finn is laughing because it's something that we are taking very seriously. We we today we have a mechanic that uh, is doing. Uh, we have a, a big chunk of our user base uh, uh, with two-factor authentication using OTP. If you do not have uh, two-factor authentication OTP, you can also reach out to our. Uh, customer support and we can set up to to FA for you an OTP at the moment. Uh, Saran, actually Saran's team will be uh, working on the settings area around security and we plan to not only set up to FA via OTP but set up also uh, using an authenticator app uh, and we're going to put out uh, videos and, and uh, I guess uh, a blog post explaining how that works and at least a help article will, will be for sure. This is definitely on, on our roadmap and we 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 will be doing something. Additional to this, I just want to say that you can you already have biometric authentication on the apps. You can enable that when you install the app, which 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 is a level of protection that we do recommend you to set up uh, as well. Um I can see that we are at time and I just want to just one one yeah, one, please, one, please. one more is Wise. wise just because it's easy yes wise and all digital banks we can accept uh payments from so just interact with our client relations team we can do we can accept from wise perfect thank you finn uh first of all thanks 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 finn thanks around for for the help here and for presenting um and for the demos thanks for everyone that attended uh we had a busy session i can see from the list um, if you have any questions, I know that there were some questions that remained un unanswered, but we, we are committed to answer all of them. Uh, if you have any questions, please reach out to contact at getstake.com or e if you go to our mobile app, you can find um, uh, a button where you can press and you can chat directly with us. Um, uh, and yeah, I guess uh, thanks for all the feedback so far. Thanks for 
the questions. Uh, and thanks for leaving the suggestion for the Golden Visa webinar. We're going to discuss internally. Uh, and I guess I say goodbye here. Um, and thanks, everyone, for the time. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.